Kia ora, my name is Holly Gimmel and I work at the Christchurch Art Gallery. In my talk today, I will be discussing the relationship between traditional kabuki theatre and three Japanese woodblock prints from the gallery's collection. All three of these works were gifted by William E. Smith in 2003, when the gallery first opened. The main artist I will be focusing on is Yutagawa Konesara, who lived from 1786 to 1864. He was one of the most successful designers of the woodblock prints, known as Yukiwe. Yukiwe translates to pictures of the floating world. This floating world concept relates to the ephemeral pleasures of everyday life. Above all, the focus on urban people and places of amusement, such as the theatre and pleasure quarters. It developed as an art form that directly appealed to the public. More broadly speaking, Yukiwe is a genre of painting, printmaking and book illustration that originated during the Edo period, 1615 to 1868. The Edo period was named after the city of Edo that we now know as Tokyo. Kunisada was the leading print artist of the Edo period and quite possibly the most prolific and successful Japanese print artist of all time. His mass-produced woodblock prints were sold in the city bookstores and the well-received works were reprinted in multiple editions. As the well-received one of the most alluring genres of UQA is the actor prints. More than half of the prints made in the 18th century feature kabuki actors. Kabuki is dramatic, expressive and elegant. It is one of the most unique theatrical forms still in the world today. Unlike modern drama, which places emphasis upon realism and the written word, kabuki serves the actors themselves. They are the focus of attention. Through elaborate costumes and vivid makeup, and beautifully styled acting and exaggerated vocalization, the plays are highlighted with picturesque settings and colorful music. The kabuki actors themselves create dramatic effects of astonishing intensity. Woodblock prints of the leading actors of the day were in great demand, and today these portraits are valued collector's items. The kabuki shown in, this, in these prints was performed solely by adult males. In previous decades, kabuki has, has started as women dressed as men. It then became illegal for anyone apart from men to play both male and female roles. As kabuki became more popular and the actors were regarded as popular heroes among the townspeople, they also wanted to have pictures of their stars. A very important innovation which contributed to the popularity of these single sheet prints is the development of these large head portraits. These depicted only the face and bust of an actor, usually with an intense or grimacing expression. Kunisada's print of Nakakuma Shikan IV as the magician Benjaku Taro dates from the high point of his career. We can see he has an elaborate and highly decorative costume, stark white makeup with a touch of blue around the jaw and chin. He gazes in a dramatic cross-eyed stare. He also carries a samurai sword and dons a large costume wig. By 1653, all actors were obliged to shave off their hair and thus had to wear wigs on stage. In the costume, in the course of time, these became more and more elaborate. The actor appears to be breaking his way into the picture. Maybe this was his entrance onto stage, slashing his way for a paper screen with his sword. Or was it the climax of a magic trick that this magician character performed? Whatever is going on here, we can be sure that fans of the actor would have flocked to the theatre to see him perform. It is known that portraits of popular actors often appeared in advance of the performances like a poster, helping to increase anticipation for the show. One particular interesting feature of this print is the signature and seals on the bottom left corner. Almost every Yukio print has an artist signature, seen here in the red shaped box with the yellow border. Above is a small circle of characters known as date and censor seal, and below and to the right are the carver seals in yellow, and the publisher's seal in white. 
Actors often modelled the latest fashion for men. In the print by Toyohara Chikonobu, we can see all of four kabuki actors wear beautifully decorated kimonos, each a very different pattern to the others. When inside the theatre, it was essential that the audience could recognise, from a distance, who was who. For this reason, actors often had their own emblems that they were wore on their clothing so that they could be identified. These four actors also have shaved heads as well as the blue makeup and characteristic stare. The main types of kabuki plays were set in urban society, often dealing with ill-fated love affairs. Others folk on, focused on historical stories as they were not allowed to touch on themes relating to the current ruler. Okigai Yushuku, his work depicts an actor playing the historical character of Sayato Samamori, who is believed to have died in 1183 during the Battle of Shinohara. For this reason, we can maybe assume that, that this print is part of a historical play. Like this previous print, the actor is wearing two swords, which is something only the samurai did. What this may, uh, was this maybe an elaborate kabuki scene based on the tragic battle? Theatre goers in 1862, when this print was published, would have been fascinated in old tales of the past and especially seeing their favourite actor in a new and dramatic role. These richly detailed and imaginative prints are exciting to viewers of our time because of their resonance with contemporary popular culture. Part of their appeal is they look almost as fresh as the day they were made. Kabuki continues to attract a large and devoted following throughout the Edo period and up until the present day. There are still many kabuki theatres in Japan who perform traditional shows for the public to enjoy. I highly recommend watching some performances on YouTube to get the full effect of this talk. Thank you.